we will see how the memory of 8086 is organized so in case of 8086 the memory is divided into banks that is two different chips and they are named as high bank and low bank so this is a representation of such an organization of 8086 memory uh, this bank is the high bank and this one is a low bank and the high bank stores odd address bytes while the low bank stores even address bytes and each bank is of 512 kb in size okay so if you see this high bank uh, it is 512 kb in size and you can see that bytes are all odd addressed in case of this lower bank the bytes are all even addressed and another important thing about each bank is even though we use 20 bit address in case of 8086 uh, physical memory only 19 bits per bank is used for addressing and uh, extra one bit is used to select uh, the banks while uh, we choose the banks for data movement so if you see here uh, the a0 bit right or the lsb of the address is used to select the lower bank while the rest of the 19 upper bits of the address that is a1 to a19 is used to choose the location within each bank okay so a1 to a19 is supplied as a common address line to lower bank as well as upper bank then uh, we saw that for lower bank the chip select is activated by a0 but for the higher bank the chip select or the input used to select the higher bank is actually uh, done or activated by bus high enable then uh, in case of higher bank the contents of the locations are moved between processor and the chip using d8 to d15 while in case of lower bank the data movement occurs or happens with the help of d0 to d7 so this uh, table summarizes how we can choose between two banks uh, for byte level data movement and to select the two banks for word level data movement note that in case of 8086 word size is 16 bits or 2 bytes that's, uh, the, that correspond to contents of two banks so this is the case when we need a word movement that is when we give bus high enable as 0 and a0 as 0 the both banks are active and a word level movement can happen suppose that we need only the contents of high bank so uh, how is that done uh, in order to just move a byte from the high bank the bus high enable is set as 0 or it is activated and a0 and the lower bank is deactivated by giving a0 equal to 1 and this is the case when we need only the lower bank that is a0 is set 0 and lower bank is activated and uh, the higher bank is deactivated by setting bus high enable as 1 then turning bus high enable and a0 as 1 will deactivate both the banks now through various cases we will see how data movement is possible in a uh, two bank structured 8086 primary memory okay uh, suppose that we need to transfer a single byte from an even addressed location in 8086 RAM so how is it that done okay. we are considering the example of two words A and B located in the primary memory of 8086 so we are assuming that A and B are both stored at aligned addresses or addresses starting at even addresses. Okay, so if you see here, even addresses are all located in the lower bank. So A and B's uh, lowermost byte starts at the lower bank. So A starts at the lower bank, then uh, the next byte of A, that is A plus 1, will obviously fall on the higher bank. Okay. So note that uh, even though we have uh, this RAM split into two chips, uh, byte addressing is contiguous across the bank. So if we start with address 0 in the lower bank, address 1 will be in higher bank, address 2 will be in the lower bank, address 3 will be in the higher bank and so on. So if you have a word starting at the lower bank, then the words next byte will be in the upper bank like that. Okay. So how can we transfer uh, maybe the lower byte of A? out of this RAM so it means so if we see here the lower byte of A is stored in the lower bank so first of all the lower bank should be selected it is done by setting A0 as 0 then uh, we have to disable the 
higher bank because we don't need a plus one so bus high enable is deactivated then uh, another thing that we need is uh, we need to select the car uh, yeah, the uh, location of a within lower bank okay so that is done using the remaining set of bits of the address bus that is from a1 to a19 so a1 to a19 contents are supplied to both the banks but only the lower bank will respond because only that bank is activated or its chip select is activated okay so the data will come out through d0 to d7 so this is how we move the lower byte of a out of the ram then suppose that uh, we need to transfer a byte located in a old bank or a high bank so here again we are considering, considering the case of the words a and b and we are assuming that we need to take out a plus one which is stored in the high bank so how is that done so as seen earlier we need to first select or activate only the high bank so that is set by uh, giving bus high enable as activated or low then deactivating the lower bank so a0 is set as high then uh, as usual we need to supply the location of a plus one within the high bank so that is supplied by uh, the address bits a1 to a19 okay so uh, those uh, things are supplied to both the uh, banks and uh, being the only active bank the contents from the high bank will be output across d8 to d15 so that is how we will transfer an odd address byte which is part of a word uh, from the ram to the cp now next case is even more curious that is when we need to transfer an entire word between the ram and the cpu how is that transfer happening so here the case considered is that of the word a which is aligned okay or starts at even address so a is uh, lower most byte is at a lower bank and a higher most byte is at a high bank so in such a case how will data transfer happen so note that in case of 8086 in any bus cycle 8086 can supply only one address okay and uh, it doesn't have any internal address uh, decoding circuitry or selection circuitry uh, which automatically fetches the adjacent bytes or uh, the adjacent chunks of a particular memory location okay so in, in case of 8086 even though it needs to move a word of uh, contents from contents from ram it needs to individually specify the contents of uh, the contents of the word or the uh, address of the word so here we have two addresses right uh, the address of a and address of a plus one so uh, the thing here is uh, we need to first verify whether data movement is possible for entire word a with a single address that is with the address of a alone so we need to check there okay so that we can consider using an example so this is the example uh, that we are going to consider that is we are assuming that the word a starts at address 20000 h Okay, it is a 20 bit address and it uh, spreads to 20,000 1H. Again, it is a 20 bit address. Then, uh, as we have seen here, uh, the LSB is used to select the lower bank. Okay, and only A1 to A19 is used in both the banks for addressing. So, we will just see the pattern for A1 to A19. So, it is all other bits apart from the LSB. So, it means all other bits of uh, 2000 uh, apart from this red colored bit. So if you see here, this is the pattern. And uh, for 20,001 also, we will see all other bits apart from the LSB. So when we note here, uh, when our word starts at an even address, uh, all other bits apart from LSB will be same for uh, the two bytes of the word. Okay, so this is actually an advantage. Even though our 8086 can give uh, only one address, maybe the starting address of the byte, it is able to uh, provide the or it is able to give the pattern of the first of the higher 19 bits of the next byte also because both the patterns are similar so once again uh, the lowermost bytes upper 19 bits as well as the uh, next low, lowermost byte of the words upper 19 bit as well as the highermost byte of the words upper 19 bits right their addresses both patterns are same so even though 8086 provides only the lowermost bytes address it can actually refer to the both the bytes as a1 to a19 is same for both the bytes okay so the 19 bit address pattern seen by both the banks are 
the same thing that is a1 to a19 so the only thing remaining is we need to activate both the banks together that's also from supplying uh, what two different addresses in a single cycle okay cpu is relieved from that okay cpu just now what has to do it has to activate only the both the banks in same cycle it is possible because both the banks are activated using different signals okay a1 to a19 being same uh, for both the bytes of the word okay uh, it is supplied by the cpu and it uh, the cpu activates both the banks together by supplying bus uh, high enable as low and a0 as low so what happens uh, data will come out from d0 to d7 as well as d8 to d15 and the entire word will be fetched okay now uh, we will see the case of an odd addressed word suppose uh, we need to take a word which starts at a, a plus 1 and ends at a plus 2 okay uh, so how will that be done so a plus 1 here it is located in a high bank and a plus 2 is located in a low bank the case is different now we have a non-aligned word okay a word which, which starts at an odd address so we will see whether the a1 to a19 pattern is same across both the banks so we will consider this case we will consider the case of the address 20001h and 20002h suppose that uh, the lower byte of uh, the word misaligned word that we are considering highest having the address 20001 okay so this is 20001 then uh, suppose that the upper byte of the misaligned word is having the address 20002 and this is 20002 then as usual we use the lsb for selecting the bank so we will remove the lsb and consider the upper 19 bits and see for any common pattern but unfortunately the upper 19 bits of uh, a plus 1 and a plus 2 are entirely different okay so just like uh, what we did for the aligned word we can't use the upper 19 bits of the uh, first byte to fetch the second byte also from the bank from the next bank okay why uh, so if you see here these are the two different patterns of the upper 19 bits of the two bytes okay so definitely the cpu has to go through two different cycles to fetch these two bytes okay so that happens with the misaligned word so what happens is in the first cycle a1 to a19 will be supplied with this pattern or the pattern of 20001 or the lower byte so in the first cycle a1 to a19 will have the address of this corresponding byte or a plus 1 in the high bank okay uh, but note that uh, the upper 19 bits of that address will actually select a from the lower bank but we don't actually require a we require a plus 1 and a plus 2 so this the lower bank has to be kept deactivated so in the first cycle only the upper bank is activated by supplying bus high enable as activated and a0 as deactivated then a1 to a19 pattern for a plus 1 is supplied and then data comes out through d8 to d15 okay a plus 1 comes out through d8 to d15 then in the second cycle what is what is done the upper 19 bits of 20002 or the upper 19 bits of the address of a plus 2 within the lower bank is supplied okay so a1 to a19 will be of the uh, will be the address value of a plus 2 in the lower bank then we need to activate only the lower bank so a0 will be activated bhc or the next higher banks chip select will be deactivated then data comes only through d0 to d7 so this is how uh, data fetch or write happens in banked division of 8086